hello guys welcome back to my channel on today's tutorial i will draft a 12 pieces blouse with a roll color detail hi my name is ayo and welcome to 011 clothing tutorials on this channel i upload diys pattern drafting and sewing tutorials if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you. I'll be working with the following items. Tape measure. Paper scissors. Ideally, a pencil should be used to draft a pattern. But for tutorial purpose, I'll be making use of this green marker pen. Ruler and curves. My full scale basic body pattern. Calculator. So I have here my full scale basic body pattern. The tutorial for this will be above and in the description box below. To begin the alteration of this basic body pattern, the first thing I will do is to add a 1 inch zip allowance to the center front of the basic body pattern. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Note that I've already joined additional pattern paper to the upper part of the pattern paper and also to the center front of the pattern of the front pattern. This will give me enough room to construct the roll or shawl collar later on. Now I'll be focusing my camera more on the front pattern. It is time to construct the roll collar. I will measure one inch upwards from the ammo line. This will be the break point for the roll collar. From this point, I will draw a, sl a slanted line that will touch the base of the front neckline curve. Like this. This is the crease line. I will now extend the break point to the zip allowance like this. We won't be making use of this part anymore. From the break point, I will measure how wide I want the base of the roll collar to be. I want it to end one inch before the ammo curve. And the value I got is seven inches. So I will measure and mark seven inches diagonally from the break point like this. I will square out the line like this. It should be a slanted line. Now I will move over to the back pattern. This one is zip allowance at the center back is not needed, so I won't include it in the back pattern. I will now cut out the back pattern, excluding the zip allowance at the center back. So this is the back pattern which I've already cut out. I will extend the crease line beyond the neck point like this. Now I will go ahead and pin the back pattern on top of the front bodies making sure that the neck points touch each other. As you can see, the center back and the neckline curve of the back person is positioned towards the shoulder and the armor curve of the front person, while the armor curve of the shoulder, while the armor curve and the shoulder line of the back person is positioned towards the neckline curve of the front person. 
Now we measure and mark 1.5 inches on the center back of the back pattern. Starting from the base of the back neckline curve. Like this. I will now match up the neck points of the front and the back patterns like this. I will tilt the back pattern until the 1.5 inch mark at the center back aligns with the diagonal crease line extension like this. So I will tilt like this until the 1.5 inch mark at the center back aligns with the crease line extension like this. I will now pin in place. I will pin the back person in place. From the base of the back neckline, from the base of the back neckline curve, I will measure and mark four inches for the width of the upper part of the collar. I will now connect it to the lower part of the collar like this. I will make the upper part slightly curved, a little bit curved. I will now connect it to the lower part of the collar. I will now trace out the outer edges of the collar like this with my marker pen. I will also come in later with my tracing wheel. So this is the tracing wheel. I will now use it to trace out the shape of the collar like this. So now I'm done with the color construction. I will make the tracing border with my pen like this. So now it is time to do the underboss tightening and the construction of the princess that line. So this is the underboss line. And in my own case, my shoulder to under boss measurement is 13 inches as you can see. My around under boss measurement is 34 inches. So I will divide 34 inches by 4 and this is 8.5 inches. So on the underboss line, starting from the center front, I will measure and mark 8.5 inches like this. I will measure what I have left and what I have left here is 1.5 inches. So on this side, close to the center front, I will measure and mark half an inch from the dart leg. On this other side, I will measure and mark the remaining one inch out of the 1.5 inches we measured earlier. I will connect these two points to the boss point using slight curves. You can also use a straight line. I will now connect these points together like this using my straight edge or a, a slight curve
From the tip of the shoulder, I will measure and mark 4 inches. And this is where the princess line will start from on the armhole. Using a straight edge, I will connect it to the boss point like this. From this point, I will come down by 1.5 inches. I will also connect it to the boss point using my straight edge. From this point, I will measure and mark 1.5 inches extension from the arm hole, which is the same amount that I came down with. I will now redraw the lower part of the armhole curve using my French curve like this. I will get rid of these sharp points making use of my, by making use of my French curve like this. I will now go ahead and cut out the front pattern pieces. I still have some excess pattern paper here that I need to trim off later on. But first, I will divide this side panel into two. Remember that we are making a 12 pieces blouse. So I will divide it into two like this. I will now go ahead and close the boss that. Now I cannot trim off the excess pattern paper. I will also cut into two pieces like this, following the division line that I drew. So these are the three pieces that will make up the front pattern pieces for the blouse. I will go ahead and label the pieces in such a way as to avoid confusion later on. So as to avoid confusion later on while sewing and cutting out some fabric. This is the back bodice pattern for the back. And from the shoulder tip, I will measure and mark 4 inches on the armhole curve like this. Using my curve, I will connect it to the two sides of the dart at the waistline to form the princess dart line like this. I will now go ahead and cut out the princess that style line like this. For this side panel piece, I will divide it into
for us just like I did for the front. I will now cut it out like this. So these three pieces are for the back. I will also label the pieces just like I did for the front so as to avoid confusion later on. So now it is time to add the necessary fullness to the lower part of the blouse. So I have pinned the front pattern pieces on this brown paper. I will add 2.5 inches to the aim on this side and I will connect it to the waistline with a straight edge. I will do this for all the pattern pieces on both sides except for the center front piece. I won't be adding any fullness to the center front of the blouse. You can also curve the aim by half an inch if you want. I will secure the pieces in place with a cello tape. I will now go ahead and cut out all the front pattern pieces. So these are the back pattern pieces. I will also do the same thing for the back pattern pieces. I will add 2.5 inches fullness at the end of the pattern pieces on both sides. But I won't add any fullness to the center back of the back piece. You can also curve the end by half an inch if you want. I will now secure the pieces in place on the brown paper with my cello tape. Then, I will cut out the three pieces. So, these three pieces are the back pattern pieces. So I want to make an adjustment to the shape of the row collar at the lower part. The lower part is not as slanted as I want it to be. So I will rectify this now. I will make it more slanted. I make the slant more steep like this. And I will cut out the excess pattern paper. So I think it's okay now. So these three pieces are the front pattern pieces. As you can see, I did not add any fullness to the center front of the center front piece. I only added fullness to just one side of the center front piece. Also, these three pieces are the back pattern pieces. I also did not add any fullness to the center back of the center back piece. I only added fullness to just one side of the center back piece. So that's it guys, we are done. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to like, 
drop a comment, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.